So good morning again. I would like to welcome everyone to Essential Social Media Tips, a virtual workshop for arts and cultural workers. This is a field building initiative funded by the National Endowment for the Arts, South Arts, and our state partners throughout our nine state region. Um, again, we thank you. Today's uh, session will be hosted by Aaron Kendrick. And with no further ado, I will turn it over to Aaron. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day. First, I wanna make sure everybody can hear me okay. Um, <clears throat> and okay, good to go. Uh, all right, so I will first start out by introducing myself. I can actually do that with the slides. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and bring up my slides for you all. All right, so everybody can see the screen. Thumbs up, Lisa. Can you see my screen? Okay. All right, so again, I am Erin Kendrick. I am a 17 year veteran art educator. So I've taught at every level pretty much. Right now I'm on the campus of Flagler College uh, where I'm an adjunct professor. Um, I'm also a visual artist and have been a visual artist for um, quite some time, <laughs> you know, many, many years. I was speaking to Lisa about having gone to graduate school in Atlanta where uh, South Arts is based. So first I wanna give a huge thanks to South Arts for inviting me to do this. Um, I had the opportunity to co-teach a course with Jessica um, where I learned many, many things from her and this opportunity came about from that interaction. So. Thank you to South Arts. Thank you to Lisa for facilitating this today. And we'll jump into it. I'm going to tell you a little more about me. And I'm going to ask everyone to mute their um, computers. We'll have a Q&A towards the end. Um, or if I'm kind of just speaking as I work my way through the slide deck, if any of you do have questions um, along the way, feel free to jump in and ask a question. But we will have a session of, of like Q&A towards the end. All right, so like I said, I'm a visual artist, um, primarily a painter and an installation artist. Um, I am director of education at Jacksonville Arts and Music School, which is a creative um, arts and youth leadership development after school program here in Jacksonville, Florida. That's where I'm based. As I just said, I am also an adjunct professor at Flagler College here in St. Augustine. So it's about 45 minutes away from Jacksonville. That's where I am now. And I also am what's considered a teacher artist. So outside of the two organizations that I teach for on a regular basis, I also do residencies, working after school programs, do like five weeks here, two weeks there. So I bounce around a lot doing things like these workshops and things like that. So I've been in this like education game for a long time. Uh, let's see. Um, I've also had the opportunity to publish so this is a chapter that I wrote in this book with Fish Rays. And this is actually a book that was written by uh, my students, written and illustrated by my students. Um, so this was an opportunity that I had to show work at our larger museum here in, in Jacksonville. This is the Kummer Museum. All right. And the way that I really sort of like connect with artists, uh, <clears throat> For the most part in my local area, but I do have quite a few people who uh, have utilized the serv services of this business um, nationally, internationally. I also run an organization called Artist Types. It's essentially a service for artists. Um, one of the things that sometimes we find that we struggle with the most as artists is not making the work um, or making the song or you know whatever it is that we do under the creative umbrella we really find it difficult to write about it. So this is a service where I do just that, where I help um, artists and creatives write about their work. Um, and the idea is that you're essentially ready for whatever opportunity comes your way. So if opportunity knocks um, and you know you get the call that day, then you do to apply for something you know, by 11.59 PM that night, that you have your paperwork ready, you have your CV, you have your statements, you have whatever you need. So this this is a service where 
I either individually one-on-one -on -one help artists with their writing or it's like downloadable templates, um, guides, things like that. So, all right. So these are just some examples. I am a visual artist. So I do speak to you from the point of view of a visual artist. Um, this seminar, this workshop um, is of course, social media focus. A lot of that will link heavily on Instagram. I think Instagram is kind of like the great middle between all of the different social media platforms that we use. So a lot of this will be focused on Instagram. So when you see something like this, just letting you know, like things like this uh, are relatively general, like a CV is general for all of us, but all of you might not write, you know, an artist statement, things like that. So I'm just letting you know, like, that's the point of view that I am speaking from. All right, let's see. All right, so we're going to jump in to essential social media tips. I am going to get my own face off the screen because you just tend to look at yourself when you're doing this. All right, so the three things I'm going to cover in this workshop um, are building a foundation, building confidence, and building a community. Um, social media can seem like a very big task. It can seem like something that is extremely time consuming. It could seem like... Uh, the the level of education you need to have just in learning how to use social media on a regular basis can can feel like a mountain to climb and it it can be in some in some ways and shapes and forms i'm not going to be someone who tells you that jumping into social media is something that you can do quickly it's something that you pretty much just have to decide that you're going to invest some time in um you know that if today you were in the same position last year where you really wanted to, you know, do better at social media, you really wanted to post more, you really wanted to engage more with people, and it's a year later, and you still haven't done it. And you know, going into this that you kind of you'll have to set aside some time for that. So what I really wanted to focus on in this workshop was ways to like compress time, you know, were ways to um, find little kind of hacks here and there to make using social media um, on a more regular basis, a little bit easier for everyone, you know, ways that you can kind of integrate it into your day, into your week in a way that isn't so um, difficult. All right. And so there, in order to do that, there are certain things that have to be in place first. And so that's what we're going to talk about building a foundation first. All right. Keep my eye on the time as well. All right. So um, first thing on the page is that you have to start. You know, that's one of the biggest things you have to do. You got to start. You got to find somewhere to start. And um, a way to sort of set yourself up for that for your start is to make sure that you already have some things in place and make sure you have a sense of who you want to be on social social media and how you want to interact with people. So we're going to talk about building a foundation. So one of the first things you need to do is to decide what type of artist are you going to be? And each of these things we'll kind of talk about, we'll unpack a little bit more as we work through the slides. Um, the next thing you wanna do is explore. You know, sometimes you wanna just kind of fish around, see what's out there, um, see what the different platforms are. Uh, you know, whose content do you follow all the time? Like who are you already kind of being pulled towards on social media? And is there something that they're doing to get your attention that you should be doing um, on your own pages? You know, we have to kind of get to the point where all the time we invest in using social media, we are starting to kind of at least set aside some of that time to be using it for ourselves and for our businesses. Um, and lastly, under build a foundation, you want to commit. Um, you have to know like what you want to get out of social media. Like we'll talk about like how I use different types of social media in the process of this workshop. But I know there are some sites that I go on just because I need to get away from everything. And there are some sites that I go on where it's, it is more like business and how I run my art business and interacting with the art community and things like that. So having a sense of like, what are your expected outcomes? Like, why are you here? What are you looking to gain out of your social media experience? And then you need to prepare. So let's say you do the thing, let's say you get on these platforms and you find yourself being successful and being noticed and being visible 
are you ready for what comes next? So this is at, this is the point at which someone finds you on social media and they really enjoy what you're posting and how you're engaging with other communities and they want to ask you for something. They want to book you for a show. They want to um, use your service, something like that. Are you ready for that? And that's where I kind of roll back into like artist types and making sure that you have what you need in order to meet the call. All right, so first we talked about deciding. You've got to decide that you're gonna do this. Social media is time consuming. It is, <laughs> you know, in order for me to, let's say, post a reel, it might take me about 20 minutes, but you know, it's highly likely that I was gonna waste that 20 minutes at some point in time during the day. So I do have to decide that I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna sit still, and I'm gonna do the thing. So you're gonna decide first that you're going to start. You're gonna make this thing happen. And I assume that most people come into a workshop like this, a workshop titled Essential Social Media Tips, um, because you're in that space, you're in the space where maybe you're not posting as much as you would like to, like this is not an advanced social media class. So I'm making the assumption that the people who are here today are people who just want like a little push forward and, and, and ways in which to kind of really get it done. So first you want to decide what type of artist uh, you're going to be. What, you know, what type of artist are you? Are you an artist who is more or less a hobbyist? You know, you're doing it for fun. Are you a professional artist? Um, and when I say the term artist, I'm speaking about creatives in general. So whether you're a musician, a visual artist, a writer, an actor, I'm, I'm speaking about all types of artists, all types of creatives. Um, are you looking to gain extra income? So are you looking to sell products via social media or at least gain visibility for your works of art that can then be sold? And is that just like side money, like a little side hustle? Or is that something that you want to be your primary income? Because that'll determine like how much time you should be spending on social media. And um, also like, are you looking to do stuff on social media because you want to be sort of like a voice? You wanna teach, you wanna educate, you wanna inform. I know many of us learn lots of things. I am someone who, you know, thrives on like YouTube University or TikTok University, and you learn lots of things, lots of how to's um, for your every everyday life, for your arts area, uh, using social media. So are you looking to be that voice when it comes to your own pages? So first you gotta get clear about what you want to do. All right, then the next thing you wanna do is just explore. Um, first, you wanna explore platforms. And towards the end, I'll give everybody, um, I'll, I'll send out a link, I'll just drop it in the chat, a link to pretty much like a resource page full of links in and about social media. So all different kinds of site, all different types of sites, um, different types of services that you can use, photo editors, content planners, things like that. Um, so what social media platforms do you want to use? Um, and you kind of have to think about the different audiences for different social media platforms like Facebook, whether you realize it or not, Facebook pretty much kind of leans older. So Facebook is going to be like your 30 plus crowd. Um, <clears throat> so there you might find like more serious collectors or more people who want to engage with your work um, on, a, on a more serious level. Um, Instagram, like I said in the beginning, is kind of like the great sort of like middle. A little bit of everyone is on Instagram. Instagram is a visual platform. So there's photos, there's video, there's opportunities um, for people to teach. There's opportunities for people to show work, show reels of what they've done. You know, you might have videos of yourself singing or dancing, things like that. Um, so Instagram kind of serves a little bit of everybody. TikTok definitely... I would say kind of leans younger, um, a little bit of a younger crowd. So you wanna think about like how you're using these pages based on the people who are there already. Cause you don't wanna invest a lot of time speaking to the wrong crowd or speaking to the wrong demographic. Um, next of course is X, which we know as Twitter. Um, Twitter is what I like to call the uh, cocktail party. So Twitter is like little quick conversations here and there. You bounce around from one conversation to the next. It's not so much of a visual platform. That's not necessarily what people are there for. 
Um, so it's kind of like quick interactions, staying abreast of what's happening with the world, things like that. Like uh, on the other side of that, like I would call Facebook more or less like a family reunion. So Facebook really is more social, more connection. Um, and then people also use it for like business purposes. Um, next you have Pinterest. I like to describe Pinterest as sort of like when, I don't know if kids still do this. I don't have kids. I don't know if kids still do this, but you know how I am in my forties. I'm 46. When I was younger, everything that I loved, I would get a poster of it and I would put posters kind of all over my walls. Um, I kind of think of Pinterest like that. It's like the posters all over your walls. It's sort of like a hub where you can hold on to all the things that you love, links, images, you know, it's just like this archive where you can keep things in. So in terms of using it for your own self, um, you can be a part of um, what other people are looking to save. So whether that's information, imagery, your music, things like that. So it's, it's, like, it's like a storage space. And lastly, there's YouTube. Um, I love YouTube. YouTube is a great platform that I don't know if everybody always kind of thinks of it as social media versus just like a video platform but it definitely can be thought of in that way. It is definitely a, a huge way and one of the leading ways to connect with audiences, especially if you are one who wants to teach um, or inform, instruct, you know, D DIYs or just give people access to what it is that you do. Um, people spend a lot of time on YouTube. So it's a great sort of like weapon to put in your bag when it comes to how people access you and your work. All right, next, uh, whose content do you follow consistently? I think it's very important for us to pay attention to who we pay attention to, to really kind of think about what it is about these people, these pages that keeps pulling us back, especially the ones that we are choosing to follow. Um, or, you know, we jump online just to see what they post in. So you really want to kind of look and see like who's out there and why they're attracting you to their page. Um, are you saving posts? Like I am someone who saves posts. Um, and sometimes I have to go back and look at my saved posts and, and I'm doing just that thing. I'm kind of auditing, like, what was I looking for? You know, why was I interested in this person? What did their voice sound like? What was their background like? Were they sitting down? Were they standing up? Um, were they walking through a store giving me information? So it's like, what is it about these pages that I'm, that's pulling me in? Um, so like I said, whose content do you follow consistently? And I'm going to show you some examples of three people that I follow. Um, and then you want to kind of make a list about what you love. So write down what it is that's pulling you in. Because all of these things may become a part of your own individual aesthetic later um, in terms of how you put your page together. All right. So hopefully these videos work because <laughs> um, there are a lot of these in this uh, workshop today. So these are three people that I sort of like um, model or want to model my page after. I am not speaking to you today because I am a social media expert. I am speaking to you today. Like I think one of the main reasons that Jessica invited me to do this is because what I do have in place are integrated systems. So I have systems that are connected in various ways where I don't have to do so much of the work. Like I have a lot of automation in my visual arts practice um, and I've figured out ways to kind of make all these things work together in, in ways that have benefited my business. I myself, like I don't have hundreds of thousands of followers. I think I'm right around about 3,500 on Instagram. Um, and that's just organic growth. That's just me kind of learning how to do this over time and putting all the different things in practice like as I've gotten to that point. So this is one of the first people that I follow and this is April Bay. And I really look at her page as an artist and how she posts her work and how you can see um, the general aesthetic of her work in her post and, and that consistency there. We're gonna talk a lot about consistency today. So this will kind of scroll a little bit so you can see some of her page. Little things that I pick up from this. Um, she rarely posts an entire body of work um, or an entire image, you know, the full kind of uh, whole image of the work. Um, and that's important for like copyright practices, things like that. 
she's very good about posting her processes. Um, so that's important. That's probably one of the biggest requests. If I ask people like, what is it that you want to see me post? And we'll talk about why you should be asking people questions like that later. Um, a lot of people want to see like my process, you know, what am I doing in my studio? So she's an inspiration for me in that way. I am, of course, an instructor, a teacher. Um, I am I'm kind of 50-50 with that, like the art making and the teaching. So Artwork Archive, which is a service that I use, and I'll talk to you guys about Artwork Archive as well, um, is sort of like a teaching page. So access to information is important to me. So I'm always thinking about like, what's a good way to go about um, the transfer of information to my to my audience. So I'm looking at things like, you know, how are they using, what font are they using? Like how big are their titles? Do they have titles on their page? You see things like checklists, um, sneak peeks, questions, things like that. So I'm taking all this in and this becomes a part of my list of the things that I might want to include um, on my own page. And that lastly, this is uh, Inneton Bariola who is, I don't even know, a tastemaker, um, a connoisseur of like art and, and lifestyle and all of the things. Um, and I love his aesthetic, just about, just how he moves. And I think that's important too, as artists, creatives, musicians, you know, that it isn't like all about the work all the time. You know, we do live regular lives, like regular people. And I love how he integrates um, his day-to-day -day life into um, the postings in and of about his business. So these are like three inspirations for me. So that's what I'm asking you to do, to kind of think about uh, what means something to you. Like whose pages do you find yourself always going back to? Um, you love the way it looks. You love the aesthetic. I am not telling you that you have to build a page that looks a certain way, whether on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, anything like that. I am not saying that you have to have an aesthetic, that you have to have a color scheme or anything like that. But I do believe that over time, once you kind of start doing this a little more and a little more, that some of those things will start to develop um, anyway. So, so those are my examples. All right, the last thing when it comes to building a foundation is that you have to commit. Like I told you, you have to make a decision to do the thing. You have to make a decision to invest some time into this. And investing time could be scheduled um, or investing time could be just random. You know, you kind of find yourself with a free moment that you can make a quick post or, and we'll talk about how to kind of prepare yourself for things like those quick, quick posts as well. All right, so under commit, you wanna identify your expected outcomes. Like again, what do you want to get out of this? Is it visibility? Do you just want more people to know who you are? Um, is it growth? So do you have like a sustained practice up to this point and you're looking to gain more followers, um, grow your page? Do you have like a, a kind of number in mind that you want to have this many followers on this particular page? Are you looking for opportunities? Um, sometimes jumping on social media is about finding opportunities um, for you to submit to, whether that shows, you know, um, different kind of calls for art, um, you know, there may be audition opportunities for those of you who are actors and things like that. So are you on there looking for op opportunities? Do you just want like feedback and critique? Um, sometimes we are creating things, we are making things, we're trying out new bodies of work and we just want feedback from people. So sometimes just posting um, gives you opportunities to get feedback from people in your, in your audience. Are you looking to sell things? you know, looking to sell things, you can pretty much sell on just about any platform that's out there. You know, it's just a matter of learning the system. So are you looking to increase sales um, via social media? And like I've spoken about before, are you looking to teach? Are you looking to advocate? Teaching and advocating are two different things. Um, or are you just looking to share? You know, sometimes getting um, a social media page up and running is not so much about um, all this kind of like heavy lifting. Sometimes you just want an opportunity to share. Sometimes you just need somebody else to talk to. So you need to just get clear about what it is you want out of using social media. And that will help you decide like where um, you should be going in order to 
um, do that thing, like which social media platform you should be using. All right, next you want to prepare. So are you ready for what comes next? Um, with that in mind, as you jump on these social media pages, a lot of, a lot of times we'll kind of jump on a page, almost kind of, I don't want to say mindlessly, but we just want to see what it's about. Um, and you may kind of just log in, you do your basic setup of your profile page and you never come back to that. You do want to maximize your profile pages. I think somewhere in here, you'll be able to see my profile page. I'll actually go back a slide so you can see the others. But you really want to maximize your profile page in terms of how people can get access to you in various ways. And I actually will show you on mine um, how I use, how I kind of list all the things that I do, how I use what's called Linktree to give people access to like all the different ways that you can connect with me. Um, I will always be a proponent of finishing your paperwork. All right. So I am big on having a CV that is finished and ready to go, having a bio that is updated, finished and ready to go. If you are an artist, having an artist statement, um, I'll show you how I keep up with them, my general artist statement and my individual artist statement. And for those of you who have inventory, so that would be like your visual artist, um, folks like that. Do you have an inventory? Like, do you have the listing of your, the artwork? Um, the sizes, who owns them, where have they been? So I'll show you how I use Artwork Archive to keep up with all of that. And then one of the most important things as you kind of jump into this social media world um, with more of a commitment is to know what your non-negotiables are. Like you need to know um, what's not right for your page. You need to know like what audience does not need to be following you. You need to know... Um, <clears throat> what you won't post, um, what you won't let your page get connected to. Because sometimes you have to be really um, aware of like who's reposting what you post or what you repost on your page. Um, and that can get a little tricky sometimes. I'll talk to you about like automations. Um, sometimes you set up automations where you post here and it also posts over there. And sometimes you forget about it. And let's say you post something on your kind of more fun, social friends page. Um, about an opinion or about, you know, some random video, but it also shows up on your business page. So you really have to be aware of things like that. All right, I'm gonna jump into the next slide. All right, I told you stay ready. <laughs> um, stay ready is kind of just like my tagline when it comes to teaching, um, because opportunities come constantly when you're when you're creative. If you're creative and you're out there and you're doing the thing, you've done the work, opportunities come pretty consistently. So you always want to be ready. Um, I have find a CMS system. So find a cu customer management system to manage your business and your bodies of work. For me, it is Artwork Archive. Um, so you can see here, I think I made like, yeah, I made a bunch of little videos. Let's see. So Artwork Archive is pretty much where I store my work. So as I make the work, um, I make sure the work gets photographed. That's an important part of the process. And then just in terms of keeping up with the information, this is where, so you can see here the statement, these are the statements for all of my individual bodies of work. Um, you can see where I have the images that go with each body of work. So my portfolio is here. This portfolio is also the portfolio that shows up on my website. So when I talk about integration, um, Artwork Archive has this cool thing where it lets you do private rooms. So when I need to submit, the things I can put work in a private room and submit the link versus uploading lots of pictures and emailing lots of pictures. I can keep up with the different shows that I've had here. Um, everything like my calendar. Let's see, it is going into the learning center. So they have video tutorials for how to use the site, you know, how to make the most out of the site. This site does have a free version. Um, I do pay for it but it does have a free version. So if you wanna just kind of jump in there and, and see what's available, um, this site also lists on their social media sites and on their website, they always have like opportunities. So they post this list every month of new opportunities, new like calls for art and things like that. So it's been a great service for me. So it's been a great investment. And that's part of committing to, you may have to commit to spending a little money on some of these things as an investment in your business. This is what the profile page look, looks like. So this is what the public sees. 
when they go to my artist artwork archive page. So as we kind of jump into my website and stuff later, I'll show you how this is connected over there. Let's see. I don't think there's much else in here. So portfolio and that's it. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, remember there will be an opportunity for question and answer at the end. So far, so good. I think we're doing good on time. Um, all right, so next, you've built your foundation. So you do want to invest sometimes. I'll say this kind of to be as honest as possible when it comes to this kind of like social media thing is you really just have to let it grow organically. Like if you're if you're in an urgent situation where you have to have these, these social media platforms set up for certain reasons, that's one thing. So maybe you do have to kind of like hunker down invest a lot of time right now. Most of the things that I've built um, on social media to support my arts practice has been built over time, has been like trying something out for a couple months. Maybe that didn't work and I tried a new program. And then over time, I have like just organically figured out what works for me, figured out what platforms work, um, what additional like my, my website service, my shop service, all of that are things that I've really just figured out organically over time. So just give yourself the time and space to get to that point, to, to kind of figure that out. All right, take a little break. All right, next, you want to build confidence. Um, a lot of people are hesitant about using social media because, you know, you don't know what your own voice sounds like, or you don't know what you'll look like on screen, you know, um, you don't know what people want to hear from you, you know, you're like, what, what would I even say? Or what would I even post about? And I think a lot of that hang up has to do with confidence. So you got to figure out ways to start to just interact with yourself. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is engagement. And sometimes that engagement happens just with you. So you want to interact with intentions. So as you are moving about on social media, looking at other people's pages, um, interacting with other people's information, you do want to start to engage. You want to comment. You want to um, repost. You want to share. Because um, all of those things will help the algorithm. You know, people talk about algorithms a lot when it comes to social media. I, again, am not an algorithm up, you know, I'm not an algorithm expert. But I do know that there are certain things that you can do in order to make yourself more visible, visible on social media. How you make your information, your post start to show up on the Explore page or how you make your information start to show up on other people's feeds. And that's all about engagement, just like commenting, sharing, reposting other people's posts. Um, and that helps you kind of, your the algorithm makes you interact with that person more online automatically. Um, I also have a note to mirror your ideal page. And I literally mean mirror. I mean, it is okay for you to make like a ghost page. So let's say you have a page out there on social media. It's almost just like a practice page for you. It's an opportunity. You don't have to have followers. You know, it could just be you and you. <laughs> and you start to make videos. You start to make posts. You start to play around with um, what things you post, what pictures you post, what videos you post. You, you listen to the sound of your own voice. I don't think we do that enough. You know, just grab your phone, turn on your voice recorder and just start to record yourself and listen to the sound of your own voice. And some of these things will help you kind of get over that, that fear of putting yourself out there. You know, see what you look like on the computer. You know, do you want your hair to be up or down? Do you want to be, you know, center? Do you want to be farther away? So there's all things like that that you're going to practice on that, on that like ghost page. And then you want to optimize. So once you get to the point where you feel like you're ready, uh, there may be situations where you need to not necessarily pay for services, but maybe you go from like a standard Instagram page to a creator page or to a business page. Same thing with like Facebook, TikTok, things like that. Because when you do sort of like upgrade the service, it gives you access um, to more, to more ways of using the page. And it gives you access to analytics and things like that. So you wanna optimize. Next, you want to integrate. 
All right, so I've talked a little bit about integration. Uh, you want to make the social media tools work for you. Pretty much all of these platforms, websites, things like that, they all work together in some capacity. But if they don't, there are also services that will do it for you. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, sometimes posting on social media is daunting because you don't want to get on Instagram and make a post, then go on Facebook and make a post, then go on TikTok and make a post. All of that is time consuming. There are ways to connect them all in ways that you post on one and it automatically shows up on the other. But what you want to do is make sure that you're aware of what type of content is showing up on which platform. Because like I said, when you're thinking about your non-negotiables, you want to know what you don't want to post on certain sites. All right, and then last but not least on building confidence is to learn. And that's the bulk of what we'll talk about today. Because I think a lot of people probably jumped into this because they wanted to learn. They wanted to um, know some hacks. They wanted to um, know how to compress time with this, um, things like that. So we're going to spend a good bit of this just talking about um, basic social media posting skill sets that will make posting easier and less time consuming. So we'll spend a good bit of time there today. All right, I'm going to check in. All right, I'm just reading one of the Q&A questions. Um, it's, it's asking, do I have a webinar that explains how to set up Facebook and Instagram ads? It's becoming increasingly complicated and a webinar would be extremely helpful. Um, I don't have a webinar, but what I'll do is I'll give, I'll send out either via just sending it out to you directly or sending it through South Arts via like the email list for this workshop. Um, access to that information. So I will make sure we get that out to you. All right, so jumping into just building confidence. Um, interact with intention, as I was saying, you do want to comment and respond um, on pages that you want to follow you. So let's say you follow somebody and it feels like you guys are interacting with one another just because their information shows up on your feed, but that's really just not always the case. Um, <clears throat> like you could follow people for extremely long periods of time and they have no idea who you are. So you really want to start to comment and respond and then they, they'll start to see you that way and possibly follow you um, from that engagement. So you do want to comment on other people's pages and when people comment on your page, you wanna make sure that you are responding to them as well. And that could be just a like, that could be a, hey, thanks. You know, it doesn't have to be anything complicated but you do want to respond to people who are commenting on your page. Um, you want to unfollow pages that clog up your timeline. You know, maybe you aren't seeing posts from certain people that you want to see posts from because you just have too much unnecessary stuff on your page. So I would just kind of unfollow things that you don't need. Um, and then, as I've said before, you want to know your audience on each platform. Um, I know kind of like how my demographics skew from site to site. So certain things get posted in certain places and sometimes things don't get posted in other places. Um, I'll talk to you already about mirroring, mirroring the, your ideal page. So practice on a ghost page. That's where you can do the things like figure out the fonts, figure out if you are thinking about like color schemes and things like that or filters. Maybe there's certain filters that you want to use. Um, by the way, you know, when you teach young adults and kids, <laughs> you learn um, how some things kind of like age you uh, when it comes to using social media. And one of the things that I've been told <laughs> by my students is that one of the things that ages you is uh, using filters, um, using various fonts <laughs> are things that you, you don't even realize those are the things that kind of like age you in different ways. Um, so practice on a ghost page. I just talked about that, just kind of making a page for yourself and then find a social media hero and duplicate their aesthetic. So that's what I was talking to you about before when we looked at the three pages that I follow pretty religiously, all right? And then optimize. Like I said, there are some programs. There's not a lot. There's, there's not a lot. I probably put um, under $100 a month into different programs that I actually pay for um, to have more access to the services that they provide. Um, and then I am going to talk to you guys a lot in a little bit about 
constantly recording and photographing the things that you do in your day-to-day -day life, like essentially building what's called B-roll for your social media post. All right. All right, so integration. You wanna make social media to tools. You wanna to make social media tools work for you. Um, you need to know when to post. And I say that it's, it's really just like good knowledge. It's great to have the knowledge about when it's best to post. That is a moving target. Um, so what times were best to post, you know, in the first half of this year might not be the same um, at the end of the year. So it's a moving target. You if you care enough, you might not care about this at all, and that is perfectly okay. If you care enough, you might want to keep up with that information. A great way to find that information is on like a Pinterest. Um, Pinterest always has someone who's more or less like a social media guru who will um, post that information, who will put that information up for you. All right, so knowing when to post, um, that also comes into play that you just know when it's best for you to post. Like for me, as soon as I wake up, it's kind of the best time for me to post because I haven't gotten into anything yet. It's not a distraction yet. For some of you, it might be late at night. For some of you, it might be midday during lunch. So you kind of know what works best for you. Use a content planner. There are free content planners out there. A content planner is where you can pre-schedule post. So you might not have time day to day to post on social media. But if you know you have a free weekend, one free weekend a month that you can invest like a couple hours into making a few posts that will just kind of automatically show up because you pre-scheduled them, um, that's what a content planner is for. All right, next, your select a go-to list of tools. So I'm going to show you like a lot of different services that I use. You kind of figure out what works for you. So I'll show you what works for me. Um, collective posts, that's when you are connecting with your friends. So let's say I make a post about the social media workshop that I'm doing today. In my post, I might tag other art friends of mine, of mine or organizations that I work with a lot so that it also shows up at least in their messages. And then they can like repost it on their stories and things like that. Um, so you want to have like a collective of people who you know you can tag and then repost what you're posting. So that's another way to engage. And um, we are all at the point in time where it's really time to embrace AI. And that services that essentially do the work for you sometimes, um, whether it's text-based, whether it's image-based. So those are some things that can work for you as well. So we'll kind of jump into that a little bit. All right, learn. <clears throat> this is where we'll spend the bulk of the time here. Um, you just need to know what's out there. And sometimes you're gonna have to invest a little bit of time in learning how to use the tools that are out there. Most of the tools that I use, I'm probably using like one tenth of what they can actually do um, because that's the amount of time I've invested into learning um, how to use the different tools. And like I said before, sometimes you play around with things. Sometimes you find that you don't like it or it don't, doesn't work for you. But that's the thing is you just want to kind of put some time into learning. So I'm going to talk through all the things on this list um, in the next few minutes. So we're going to talk about some different social media platforms, like some primary social media platforms. And like I said, I'm gonna give you access to a list that has a bunch of other um, social media platforms listed on there that you'll have links to. Um, content creation, like what are the best tools for content creation, content planners, integration, reposting, stock images, AI, posting schedules, hashtags, keyboard hacks, some things that'll make, make your life a lot easier. Um, establishing narratives using stories and reels and playback speed. Playback speed is not something that a lot of people think about, but it is one way to keep people on your page. Sometimes when your videos take too long, <laughs> uh, people just, people are not going to stick around for the end of it. So there's ways to work around that. All right. So these are some of the different platforms kind of the main one. So I mentioned these before, and this is essentially how I use them. So you want to think about like, what are these platforms? What what's the audience for most of these platforms? And then how can you use it for yourself? I do not use all of these platforms every day. Um, in terms of posting, um, I don't even use all of these platforms every day as a user either. either. But um, when I need them, this is kind of how I use them. So Instagram is a daily thing for me. 
Um, Instagram is where I engage with the art community. So on Instagram, I do not follow like a lot of family members. Like, I don't know, I don't want to know on Instagram what you're eating for dinner. I don't want to know on Instagram, like what you did this weekend. On Instagram, I want to specifically engage with the art community, greater art community. So I set that aside for a different platform. It's where you can see my artwork. So it's my portfolio. If I'm having events like this workshop, and then I also have listed here art consultancy and I want to pose myself as a subject matter expert. So where I was telling you that I follow that artwork archive page um, and I'm looking at their aesthetic and how they uh, disseminate information it's because I'm looking to kind of move in that direction with my page also. Um, I am in the space right now of speaking and teaching a lot more and positioning myself as an art education consultant. So my social media pages are a good way for me to start to pose myself as the expert. Um, so Instagram will be a main page for that. Pinterest is also good for that. Um, posing yourself as a subject matter expert. And for me, it's like ideation and inspiration. You know, Pinterest is this constant spool of just images and videos and things like that. So it's where I get where I get a lot of ideas and inspiration and also where I store a lot of ideas and inspiration. Um, YouTube uh, will be another opportunity for me to uh, position myself as a subject matter expert. So I'm in the process of building out a YouTube page now. It is also a teaching and learning hub. Like I feel like I learn everything from YouTube, um, especially about social media, learning how to maximize social media. YouTube is where you want to go to do that. And if that's your area of expertise or if you have an area of expertise, and trust that you do have an area of expertise, like where you are now may not be where you want to be, but you've spent years getting to where you are now. And there's somebody else out there who's just starting that journey who needs to know what you know. So you are a subject matter expert on something. So there's an opportunity for you there. Um, TikTok, honestly, TikTok is where I play. Um, TikTok is kind of like my getaway. So I hate that it <laughs> may be going away soon. But I, it is also an opportunity for me to post videos, like how-to videos on things. Um, it is, again, like YouTube, a great place for me to learn things um, and to also in uh, network with other creators in the industry. Um, Facebook, I mentioned before, I called it like the family reunion. Um, Facebook for me is about social connections and letting people know what's happening if there are events like exhibition opening, things like that. So, but essentially this is where like the people are for me. This is like, well, this is where I want to know what you have for dinner and who's getting married and things like that. So Facebook for me, is not so much of a business platform, but when I talk about in inter integrations, my Instagram, which is more business minded, does connect to my business Facebook page. Meaning like what I post on one also post on the other. And I also mentioned that Twitter X is more or less like the cocktail party. Um, so this is like quick conversations. This is also social connections, but it also has opportunities for you to position yourself as a subject matter expert. So you'll figure out what works for you. You'll figure out if only one of these things, one of these platforms is what you wanna be on and where you wanna focus on that is perfectly okay. Um, and then there's, there's lots of others along with that. There's Spill, there's Threads, there's LinkedIn, um, but I was really trying to focus on the ones that most creatives kind of are on right now or have been on for a while. All right. So when it comes to tools, there are certain tools that you need to have in place that you need to be using um, for this practice. And I'm going to kind of run through these as fast as I can so I can uh, get to the Q&A. Let's see. I'm going to check this chat really quick. All right, we'll talk about some of those at the end. I'm going to check Q1 and then really quickly. Oh, that's the same one. Okay. Let me go back. Turn that off. Okay. So let's see. Some of the tools that I use. One, your phone is like one of your best tools that you can use. If you, I am an iPhone girly, as you can see by the image. Um, some of you may be Android users, but your phone, photo, video, you just want to constantly be taking images. You want to constantly be be taking pictures. Um, 
taking video of, you know, like my phone while I'm sitting here doing this workshop, my phone recorded like a minute or so of it because it just becomes B-roll. It just becomes extra footage that I can use to post randomness <laughs> at some point in time later on. All right, Canva is a great place for content creation. Canva is by far the least expensive, um, most well-rounded uh, platform for you to use um, when it comes to building content. What you see playing in this video is their um, content planner. So Canva does have a free service. Uh, the paid service is only like $12.99 a month. So again, I pay for this service because I do want access to um, more of the things that they have available when it comes to content creation. So this video pretty much goes through that. My phone does screen record. So uh, my iPhone, and I think, I'm, I'm not sure if I stuck that video in here or not. If you don't know how to record your phone, I'll talk you through that. But this is me jumping onto Canva and then getting into the content planner from Canva. It's a part of their service. Um, these are just some of the things that you can create in Canva. So that's what's scrolling through right now. I'm just showing you what you have access to. Canva is a template service. So they do most of the work for you. And then you go in and you play around with fonts and colors and things like that. Their content planner is listed in the apps. It's here. Um, <clears throat> You would select the date that you want the post to show up. So this is for pre-scheduling. Um, so I think I picked like today on this one because I did this last night. Um, you tell it if you're gonna make a post or an event, um, you can connect your different channels. So if you have a Twitter page, if you have an Instagram page, if you have Facebook, you can pick and choose. You just connect them and you can pick and choose. You pick the image that you wanna use for your post. You set the date and the time, you type out the post, and then you schedule it. And then it just kind of automatically shows up on that day. All right, InShot is just a video editing service. It's also an app on the phone. It's not on your computer. It's an app on your phone. Um, CapCut is both on the computer and on the phone. CapCut is great because all you have to do is like a pre-edited video template. It's great for reels. So all you really have to do is kind of like connect your images to it. And it has done all the editing and everything for you. So CapCut is also great for that. When it comes to integration, um, um, Zapier, I think that's how you say it, Zapier. And then if this, then that is a great integration service. So if I can go into Instagram and let's say when I post a picture, there's a, a point on the, when I scroll up, it'll say share to Facebook and I can elect to share it to Facebook. So some of these programs have integrations um, within them already. But if they're, if you're using two different programs or three different programs that are not automatically connected, you can use a service like Zapier um, and it's a trigger service. So you pretty much go in and, you're, and you say, you set up a trigger. When I save a picture in my Google photos, that picture also saves in my Canva photos. So it's a way for you to force the connection between different programs. And there's lots of different triggers that you can use. Um, so these are great. Um, if the things don't automatically come in the service, these are great trigger um, integration programs that you can use. Um, Repost is another app um, that you can use. So let's say somebody else posts something. I don't know what I'm doing here. I think I'm reposting on this. Let's see. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. What I'm doing on this page, this is my art teacher page because my students always want access to my Instagram. I had to build a page for that because I don't want my students, because I have students as early as young as fourth grade. I don't want my students to access my regular business page. So this is my teacher page. And what I wanted to do was take a post from my teacher page and I wanted to repost it to my normal regular page. So that's what I'm going through here using the repost app. So this is me showing you how I go about that. So on my page, so on anyone's page, you can go and you find an image, whatever you wanna repost. And then you'll need to go to the three dots in the top. You'll go here where it says copy link and you'll go down here where it says copy link. So this is specifically for the repost app. Like I said, I'll give you a list of links that you can access. So once I have copied that link, I go back to my regular page 
you have to have the regular page. The page that you want to repost to, you have to have that up when you go into the repost app. So now I'm going into the repost app, which is here. And this is just the process for reposting. So whatever I copy, the link that I copy will show up. And then I just use the service. I copy from here. This copy caption never works. So I copy from here. I click copy. Um, typically, if you're posting somebody else's stuff, you want to give them credit. You should not be posting people's stuff and just kind of claiming it as your own. So you want to give them attribution. So I'm saying that I want that to show up in the bottom left. And then I essentially from there, I'm going to click repost. It'll ask me, do I want it on Instagram? This is an Instagram service. Do I want it to go to my story or my feed? I let them know which one. It brings up the picture. And then I click next. And now I'm in Instagram. I can just go here and say, I want to pay for Remember, I copied, um, I copied the information from the post. So I am kind of writing my own post. And then I can just paste the rest of the information. All right, so that's how that works. That's how repost works. So I told you a way to engage and build followers and things like that is to engage, to share, to repost. So this is how you can share that work. All right. If you need things like graphics, you need stock photos, things like that, there's millions of services out there for that. The ones that I primarily use um, are Creative Market and Envato. These are things that you have to pay for. So when I'm pulling graphics, and graphics could be anything. It could be fonts. It could be mock-ups. Like, let's say you have a design that you want to put on a mug. Um, so you can buy that mock-up from there. It's templates, things like that. So those are paid services. Pexels, Pixabay, iStock. iStock is also a paid service. Tonal is also a paid service. Pexels and Pixabay are free. They just do ask that you give the artist, the photographer's credit. Um, I always like to mention Tonal. Because if you look like me, sometimes it is hard to find stock imagery, videos, things like that, that have people of color in them. Um, so Tonal is a, is a stock photo, stock video site specifically for people of color. Um, when it comes to AI, um, Mid Journey, Dolly, these are for um, AI generation. AI is image generation. So I can go into an AI service and I can say, you know, create a photographic image of a 25 year old man shopping in a shoe store and it will scour the internet to construct an image and it will feed me a brand new image. Um, OpenAI, we call it ChatGPT um, on most days, is a text-based uh, AI generator. So I'm gonna show you a quick example of that. Let's see. <laughs> So this is also an app on my phone, but you can use ChatGPT on your computer. I think most of us have probably used this before. So I enter in a question. I enter in a prompt. So I can't remember what I put in this. So if you're, if you're thinking about, I'm going to hit pause. If you're thinking about social media and how you want to engage, ChatGPT is a great service for that. If you don't know what to post about, ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT will give you a month's worth of content um, on a content planner. You can have the ChatGPT build a content planner for you. So I think here I'm just asking it to give me like a week of social media post ideas. Um, so at the end of the day, you don't even necessarily have to come up with all of these things yourself. Let's see. So it's pretty generic. You can get as specific as possible. So it gives me ideas to post. So Monday, share a behind the scenes look. Wednesday, share a quote. Friday, highlight a recent exhibition. So it's like you don't even have to think about it. So there are services out there that kind of make, you know, integrating these things into your day-to-day -day life a lot easier. And sometimes you just have to put some time into playing around with it. ChatGPT, I believe is free, has, is a free service. Um, Midjourney, um, I think Mid Journey does have a free service. I do pay like $8 a month because I use it a lot. Um, all right, so Linktree. I told you that Linktree was one of the things when I met Jessica that um, uh, I think, you know, initiated the conversation about teaching a class. Linktree is, um, let's say you have like your Instagram page um, or you can, 
for the most part, you can use a link to put this on just about any like social media platform you have. But if you're on my Instagram page, you pretty much have access to my Instagram page and possibly other Instagram pages. There's only so much text you can put in your profile. Remember, I told you to maximize your profile. One way to do this is through Linktree. The Linktree is another service. It's an app. It's also on your computer um, where you can, for the most part, take all the links, all the places that you want people to be able to go to access what you do. And you put all those links in there. So it sits right here. So this is my profile page on Instagram. Um, like I said, maximize your page. Tell people who you are. Um, this is my main website. This is my artist types site um, where I help other artists. This is my teaching site. But I do have other actual links that I want people to get to. So this is my Linktree main link. And this will show you kind of where it goes from there. So Linktree brings up this page. It should scroll in a minute. So all of the things, all of the places that I want people to have access to um, are here. So videos from artist talks that I've done, you can access. You can purchase my student's book. You can start your own artist um, artwork archive page. You can do all of those things from those links. So this is what the Linktree website looks like. Um, so you would log in just with like your Instagram page or something like that. But there are other similar services to Linktree. Linktree is not the only service like this out there. So there's lots of other similar services. You can also, if you're web savvy when it comes to building a website, you can also create a website page um, that does the same thing that you link, um, which will drive more traffic to your website. All right, we're getting through this and then we'll jump into Q&A. Lastly is, I don't know if this is lastly, but also Bitly. Bitly is just a link shortener. So let's say you need to post a link somewhere, uh, but you know that link, when you post it, that link is gonna be six lines worth of text. Um, so you can go into Bitly and you can create like a shorter link for it. So it'll be like www.bitly.com backslash one, two, three. So you can give it just like a shorter um, site site link. All right, I talked to you a little bit about um, when to post. This is what I found currently. So this was as of last night, doing a little research, the best time to post on social media in 2024, um, 7 p.m., 3.15 p.m., and 8.41 a.m. in your target audience's time zone. <laughs> so if you care, you know, a lot of people just don't even care about this. It's just post when they post. If you care, um, this is the latest information that I could find. All right, another thing that you see on people's pages um, are hashtags. Sometimes you'll go to someone's page and they have like 40, well, you can't do 40. They have like 30 hashtags. And you're thinking to yourself, there is no way every time I post, I am going to type out all those hashtags, right? Easy way to do it, kind of the lowest hanging fruit is to go into your notes, um, type out your hashtags and you can copy and paste when you make a post. But even doing that, every time you make a post, you're gonna have to leave the post, go into notes, copy, go back to your um, post page, your like Instagram or Facebook page or whatever, and you'll have to paste there. So it's a little bit of extra steps. So I'm gonna show you a hack that has to do with using the keyboard system. Again, I have an iPhone. I'm not sure if, this, if there's a way to do this in Android, but I'm almost sure that there is. So know that hashtags are essentially a digital filing system. So when you see something that has a little pound sign in front of it, that's essentially a hashtag and hashtags make your post searchable. So if I make a post about my artwork and I put in the comments um, or I put in the post, you know, hashtag black artist, when somebody goes on Instagram or goes on Facebook or goes on TikTok and they search black artist, it might be in the bottom of 100,000 million posts, but my post would show up under that search content. Um, these also feed the algorithm. So these also help your pages get found. So this is my hashtag hack and it has to do with using your keyboard on your phone. All right, so I have hashtags that I use for different reason. I have them all saved in the notes in my phone, all right? So this is something I sat one day and I got done. Sometimes this comes just copying and pasting from other people's pages. So I'm in my notes and I am copying one set of my hashtags. So that's what's happening now. Watch the time. All right. Gotta move. 
All right, so I'm going into settings. I'm going into general. I'm going into keyboards. And then I'm going up here into text replacement. So I wanna add, I wanna make a new text replacement. I'm gonna paste my hashtags there and I'm gonna create a shortcut. Your shortcut needs to be something random. If you type in a word that you know, like cat, then anytime you type the word cat, this pops up. So you wanna make it something kind of really random that doesn't make sense. So I chose TTK. So what happens is when I'm on my phone and I type the text TGK, it will give me access to that list of hashtags. So this is back in Instagram. Let's say I'm making a post. I'm doing my caption, so I'll kind of enter a little bit of text. And then I will type in my random text. It's coming. I was deciding where to put it. So I type TGK. And down here, my hashtags show up and I can just click and they all pop up there. So that's like a quick hack to make using hashtags easier. All right. Let's see. Um, I talked to you before about establishing your narrative, creating B-roll. That means at random, record, take pictures. At random, record, take pictures. As much as your phone space will allow, just kind of hold on to things because those things that you hold on to at random could become videos like this. I didn't know this thing had sound. <laughs> so I'm going to talk over this while it's playing. Um, all that B-roll, again, feeds into your, your stories and your reels, um, which is less complicated than you would think. It's not complicated to make a story or a reel. Um, it's a quick post. Maybe it's some text. Um, it's something you can do really randomly. Um, <clears throat> Algorithms, social media algorithms love video. So sometimes if you're only posting text and you're like, nobody sees this, nobody responding, nobody responds to it, it's because algorithms love videos now. That might change by the end of the year, but right now they love video. So doing more like video photo things will help. Keep it simple, reuse and repost. So I can very well take, this is from last year. I can easily post this again sometime next year. But all that B-roll is what helps kind of build things like this. Um, speed it up. <laughs> a lot of videos, I know I personally talk slowly sometimes. I'm from the South, you know, all the things, um, which can be a drag for some people. So this is a video at regular speed. So this is something from my YouTube page. And this is it sped up. So it's not even a big difference, but it does, sorry, but it does make a difference in like how long people will sit and engage with your page. So I gave you some notes, like for Instagram to keep it under 15 seconds, YouTube under 15 minutes and TikTok under 30 seconds. All right, last but not least, and I'm gonna run through, this is not a lot of video and stuff, run through this quickly so we can jump into Q and A, um, <clears throat> is building a community. You've, you've built your foundation, you started to post, you've started to engage, you've started to figure out and post about who you are online. Now you wanna just build your community. Um, collaborate with your support circle, um, possibly start a VIP page. I am an artist and I have collectors. You may be a musician and you have sort of like your core group, you know, like Rihanna has her Navy and B Beyonce has the Beehive. So maybe you have like your core group of people. You can start another page specifically for that core group of people. So we'll talk about that really quick. Interact, I've said over and over again, you have to comment, share and repost. You have to engage with your audience in order to stay relevant on social media and then build trust, be yourself. <laughs> start where you are. Um, if you need some time to just kind of work through it, like I said, start a ghost page, but just be your authentic self on your page because it's hard enough to post on say, social media. It's even harder to like post as someone else. Um, let's see. Invite and collaborate this video. I'm just showing you how you can invite others to your page. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Do you see here where it says tag people and invite collaborators? So if I want, if I make somebody a collaborator, that means when they accept it, the post will show up on their timeline, show up on their feed. 
um, when you tag someone. So after these, these two I posted as collaborators, when you tag someone, that means it'll show up in their messages. So they choose, they you know, if they want to repost it in stories or something, they can, but it won't necessarily show up on their feed. So ask people to share. Use the hashtag, please share. You can run contests that can get people involved. And the contest might be follow me, you know, one of the parameters of the contest. Automate and use integrations. I talked about that a lot. And continue to repost your stuff and other people's stuff. Um, when I said start a VIP page, I meant like for those people who like are your collectors, are your kind of main patrons, maybe they get early access to things. Maybe they get pre-sale tickets. Maybe they get a preview of the upcoming exhibition. It's not a page that you have to like post a lot on and things like that. People just want to feel special. So when, when it's necessary, you post on that page and you kind of build um, your audience that way. All right, um, engage and interact, same thing. Comment on other people's posts, reply to those who post to you, share and repost, um, engage with your followers. When it comes to things like stories and reels, um, and I'm focused on Instagram because most of Instagram, you can just repost to Facebook and other things like that. Um, do a poll question, ask people what they're looking for, ask people how their day is, things like that to get them involved. Uh, I told you to be authentic, be yourself, honor your personal voice. People want to hear from you. Um, and I start where you are. Use that ghost page for practice, record your voice and listen to it often. Keep it simple, figure out your aesthetic and be willing to make mistakes. All right, so I am going, this is just kind of like connections, things like that. I am going to open up the chat box and also we'll start from the chat box and then we'll see. Um, let's see, what filters age, what fonts, uh, share please. I saw a couple of videos on this, um, using filters in general. <laughs> um, it, it, that's what the, those creators said, like ages you, like any filter more or less like ages you. And like I said, I know a lot of people do it, but this is just like, you know, Social media gossip, um, fonts, anything besides that, like really basic, like serif font, um, ages you. And you know, this is just the opinion of a few, so I wouldn't get too caught up in that. Let, let's see. Hi, Ladonna. Um, same here. Do you use Threads? What do you think about Threads? I don't use Threads actively. It's just and it's just another audience to build. So I'm not really interested in that right now. Um, I think it works for entertainment types. I think it works for political types um there are artists on there there is an artist community growing on there it's just not something that i've jumped into personally i do have a threads page though threads is automatically connected to instagram so if you have instagram you have access to threads um do you have any specifics that you feel helped you make art sales connect with collectors and people in general who buy art anytime i post about process anytime I am in my studio painting or I don't know you're in at the piano practicing any videos like that I gain followers and people start emailing me asking questions about upcoming shows and things like that if I just post the artwork I do get some engagement but when anytime I post like process photos so most of the time when I'm in my studio at some point in time if not various times I'm going to set up my camera and just record myself working because I get the most feedback from that um, I just answered about threads, LinkedIn. Um, so those of you who want to be subject matter experts, meaning let's say you're some type of educator, um, you want to teach people processes, things like that. Um, a service like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is more of the professional crowd. Um, it's full of corporate folks. And again, subject matter expert, experts. As an artist, I don't really use LinkedIn as a social media platform, but um, as I move into this space of positioning, sorry, positioning myself more or less as like an art consultant and art education consultant, that's where I'm kind of shifting that information to. So that'll be where I, you know, write articles about, you know, how to engage a classroom, how to teach narrative, things like that. So as I move into that space, I'll use LinkedIn more. I do have a LinkedIn page, but I don't use it to promote my artwork. Love, love, love Can Canva. Um, you can't beat Canva. If you are not a editing an editing person, if you don't know how to use Photoshop, even if you do know how to use Photoshop, I know how to use all of it. I still use Canva for everything. 
It can do just about everything you need on Canva. So if you don't know it, spend a little time. It is drag and drop. It is simple. It has a million apps connected to it. Try it out. All right. I use repost all the time. I'm social media mess platform. So this is a connection for all of you in the comments. I'm the social media manager of several platforms and I currently work for the Appalachian Studies at Appalachian State University managing their platform. So, hey, I don't know if you're looking to pick up clients, but those of you who just don't have time to do any of this, a social media manager can be your best friend and pay them for the work they do. Best ways to protect my painting photos from stealing. Honestly, you cannot. It is what it is. Um, when you post it, it does carry some copyright advantages. You yourself can go through the copyright process to really protect your work. But um, the the kind of way the world is right now, honestly, just put it out there. If you're if you're holding on to it that much and you don't want to share it, just don't share it. But otherwise, like I am completely, I I just put it out there. It's out there. <laughs> How to record on the phone. All right, um, I don't know if I have this video on my phone, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the screen sharing off in a minute. Do, 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 do. do you have a webinar that's coming? Okay, that's the ads. Uh, on the ad in Android. So somebody did put directions in here for using the hashtag hack on the ad Android. So you might wanna go in and, you know, you can save your chat. So you might wanna go in and try to save your chat email me the link to this for the VIP page. Would you suggest a brand new IG page? Where and what platform? I would suggest Instagram, but you got to think about where those people are. So if that VIP group of yours lives more on Facebook, then maybe that's where that page is. Or maybe you have both. Like I said, my Instagram feeds directly into my Facebook. Hey, Mary, I might know you. Um, it feeds directly into my Facebook business page. So you can just connect the two and let them live in both places. How are you? Um, let's see. Do you feel like the hashtags make your caption too busy? I watch a lot of social media videos, um, like how-to social media videos. The ones that are kind of coming up at the start of 2024 are saying that, you know, in this time period, hashtags are not as important. Um, so if you do feel like it clouds up your cap caption, one option is to put your hashtags in your comments. Um, and that way it doesn't live in your post at all. So you can drop it into your comments or you can just not use them at all. So my understanding from watching a few videos just preparing for this session is that captions are not as important as they used to be. So um, you might just choose a few. Like I don't always, honestly, I don't always use hashtag much at all. Or if I do, it might just be like four or five. Like when they were really popular is when I set that notes page that had like, you know, 50 lines of captions. You could do up to 30. Um, let's see, do I have to create a new Instagram? I talked about that. Uh, let's see, sometimes I see that someone has a Facebook page that people can like, but additional group page. Um, maybe called a VIP page that others have to join. What is the purpose? It is just that. Like I have a, um, although I haven't used it as much, um, I do have an artist types group page. So when I do use it more, it will be where like that subject matter expert, expert information comes up. Or when I do workshops and webinars, they'll kind of live on that page. So I would think of a group page as that, like a gathering spot for a specific group of people that could also be, so a business page um, or a group page could be what you use as your VIP page. I read somewhere that you can hide the hashtags in your story. Where'd it go? Um, in your story, moving the font off the screen. I did see that um, the other day, but when I was making the video showing you how to like invite collaborators and things like that, I couldn't pull the collaborator names or the tags off the page. So I'm not sure about the hashtags. Very helpful. I will start after my conference. I need social media manager. There are lots of people out there. You can go to pages like um, Fiverr or Upwork. Um, and there are lots of people, people who are in America, people are, who are in like remote countries all over the world who you pay a fee to and they will do all of this for you. If you can afford it, it's not a bad investment. Um, I am trying to work to the point where I can afford it because it's not cheap either um, so that I can focus on making the work. So when you get to that point, it's, it's a great help to kind of hire somebody to do this. 
Advanced conference. All right. Is there a specific day or two that works best for posting? So I did list that. Weekends are best for me. Honestly, I don't go by the times. Mornings are best for me. Like, as soon as I get up, I'm like, what do I need to post? Let me go ahead and get it out there. Um, I don't use the content planner as much. Um, just because I'm not that. I'm not that organized. Um, but content planners are great. Um, but my advice is just kind of whatever works for you. Let's see. What are your thoughts on losing some followers as you gain others? It's too much to keep up with, honestly. If you lose a lot of followers at one time, you probably need to investigate that. But if it's like one or two here, like, you know, typically as I grow, it'll fluctuate like five or six people up and up and down, you know, because I might post about my artwork one day. But I do like the idea of so we got seven minutes. I do like the idea of integrating lifestyle in there. So like over COVID, I gained a lot of weight and I talked to people all the time and I wanted to kind of get healthier and do all the things. So, you know, the next day I might post my gym video because all of these things matter to me. You know, artists, we live in silos. We sit in our um, studios. We kind of eat fast food and all the kind of stuff. So lifestyle is important. Um, and I want to make that a part of the story that I tell but there might be people who just want to see my artwork. So when I post that video, they unfollow me. But somebody else might love that video. And so it just, it goes back and forth. So I would only really think about that if you are losing a lot of people at once. And you need to look into it. Hi, LaDonna. LaDonna's my loctician. Uh, this is giving me a new perspective and better utilizing my time with tech to use social media better. Thank you. You are so welcome. Do you have a webinar that this that one keeps coming up? Okay, so that's there. I'm jumping in Q and A now. Mm, oh, that was I saw that already. Working on the monologue, I would really be grateful to learn from you. You are amazing. All right, I will copy my Q and A as well, so I can connect with you outside of this. All right, any questions? Um. I guess uh, between myself and Lisa, we can pull up the screen to see people. So if you have any additional questions, please, um, I'm gonna stop the sharing. Oh, I'm also, I can also show you guys how to screen share. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn this off. All right, let's see. So I'm speaking, can everybody maybe see me on their large screen? Mm -hmm this yes um all right so i can only see myself small so all right so this is my iphone screen that's me so in that top where the um battery is you know how you can pull down for your control center if you just where's the phone i need to turn the blur off <laughs> uh, video blur All right, I know it came off, okay. All right, so up here, I'm just gonna pull that down to get my control center to show up, right? Now, it may not show up for you first. So first you gotta go to, go to your settings. Under settings, you go to control center. And this of course is just for an iPhone. So I'm in my control center. If you don't have it set already, it's probably at the bottom. So if you scroll down, you'll have a little plus mark next to a red icon, I believe, that says screen recording. So you wanna click that plus sign and it'll add it to your controls on your control panel. So first you have to do that. If you don't have access to it already, you need to go into your settings and turn it on. Once you do that and it lives up here in um, included controls, then you want to go to your control center and then it's that little dot right there so if i click on it it'll count down and then once it turns red is red once it turns red it is recording so anything that's on my screen as i kind of bounce through apps and stuff it will record you can see that red around the time up there that lets you know that it is recording when you're done recording you just hit stop hit the red and it'll ask you if you want to stop you hit stop and then it'll go into your photos so that's how you screen record on an iphone all right let's see any additional questions 
hopefully you've gotten a lot out of this. I didn't go into, like, I feel like Facebook ads is the advanced class. Um, when it comes to this, I personally do not use them, um, although I've learned it, learned the process. Um, so, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for another workshop later on that. But this was really, I wanted to focus on helping everyone get on social media and use it in a way that compresses time, you know, use it in a way that you can get in, knock it out, get done, um, and go from there. When it gets beyond that, honestly, when you get into like Facebook ads and you get into all, you know, like this hyper management of it, it may be time to start if you can pay somebody to do it. And that might be your teenager, <laughs> you know, that might be a student at a college, anything like that. So. All right, I see a lot of thank yous. Um, when the recording is sent via email, I'll also send Lisa the list of links um, on there and I will bring back up just so you guys have access to me. This is my, like how to get in contact with me. I am doing, I teach artists like professional development. So whether that's the writing side of it, whether it's like starting your businesses, things like that. I'm having a summer studio camp. Um, it will start in person. So that's here in Jacksonville. But after that, it will be virtual. So if you want to just be on the mailing list for that, that's what this link is here. If you want access to the templates, like how to write a CV, how to write a statement, things like that, that link is there. That's the QR code. Uh, this is my personal website for my artwork and my email address. A huge thank you to South Arts for inviting me here today. Um, this has been a pleasure and I hope I get to do it again because um, I love doing things like this. I love like sharing knowledge and education and just kind of how I got here. You know, I don't know everything, but I do know how I got here. And hopefully if I can get and help someone else kind of get to that point, we'll get to the next step together. So, all right. So we'll send that information out.